So I'm super excited because today we are talking to Kisa Rooney and we are getting a really unique perspective. So as you may know, I'm an American living in France and we've talked about race a little bit on this channel, but today we're getting a cool perspective because we're talking to Kisa Rooney who was raised in Switzerland, now lives in Germany. So he's going to give us the perspective of a person of color in a predominantly non-person of color <laughs> environment, right? Yes. And what that's like and what that is like, because, you know, we hear so many different things and, you know, maybe you can help us out because when I've talked to people in France, they always say to me, oh, you Americans, you're obsessed with race here in France. We don't even see color, you know, it's just you guys. So tell me, with, with, your, with your perspective, with your experience, do people see color? Was race an issue? Just give us a little insight into what your experience has been like. So uh, the, the number one action that people um, do to this conversation is they first emphasize that it is never about race or that they don't see race. This, and, and they are doing it with such a passion that you immediately know it is about it, is all the time, just when you enter the room. Uh, and the thing is, um, yeah, I mean, first of all, that is, uh, and also they try to, they try to put and blame and project all of their issues to uh, uh, the United States, but it's just as much an issue. The fact that we don't talk as much about race in Germany is uh, by design, is a problem and is also by design. It is because Germany has itself, uh, has kept itself white intentionally uh, through World War II and so on. So there's a lot of um, discussion necessary about that um, and it's not happening it's not happening at all and people also get silenced either with uh, it's not about that or it is an american problem and it is it's a complete joke and it is funny because for example german journalists are very eloquent suddenly become incredibly eloquent in analyzing the racism in the united states but as soon as it comes to looking at their own homework whether it is in switzerland or in germany they suddenly they don't see anything anymore. Even the most dullest thing where even white Americans are like, and so like, this is happening here. And they're like, yeah, they don't see it. They don't want to see it. They choose not to see it because it is so part of uh, European culture. Well, can you give an example? What are the things that people don't want to see in Germany? I mean, on one side, people are claiming that, um, people are claiming that it is, uh, immigration is new to Germany. But I mean, when you look at the history, who was in the concentration camps? Until today, Germany is super motivated in funding um, the European Frontex organization, which is basically just an organization to keep away everybody, uh, everybody from Europe, which mm -hmm. is uh, which is a big topic. And also until today, like Germans are saying it's not about race, but the only reason why the German Nazi party AFD is now in parliament with 20% something or 15% is like, it's all about, it's just all about that problem, that, uh, that problem from Europe without, without the topic of race, this party had no existence. This party could not profit from any idiotic nostalgia that Germany still has. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I can understand how in the political arena that some of these maybe more conservative right wing sort of uh, platforms or groups are, are getting more power. But what about in your personal life? Did you ever feel different or did you have people treat you in a way that you felt was different because you grew up in, in an environment without other people of color really? I mean, when is it not the case? Like, for example, as soon as I leave the house, like people are staring at me, people are staring at me, people are uh, and staring in, in a very dull and rude way, in a way how they really only stare when they are when, when it's very white majority, uh, a white majority situation, because this amount of staring, for example, stops as soon as I enter one of you Berlin's diverse companies where it's really clear, like half or 60% of the room is white, the rest is non white, and there's no staring anymore. But as soon as we as even partially in Berlin, but especially in the smaller areas, people are staring and they are staring rude and aggressively. Uh, and then suddenly, then they start in public presentation, they suddenly start talking about, I mean, when they look at me, they suddenly start talking about, for example, Brazil or, 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 or uh, North Africa. And some people 
where you can clearly hear they speak about Brazil or North Africa for the very first time in their entire life. And it's incredibly dull. And as soon as you just point it out in some way, they react really aggressive. They react really aggressive. So, so like give um, the example where, okay, so yeah. you, you're you on a train or you're somewhere and someone thinks you're from Brazil. And I mean, yeah, for example, Four, four, four white Germans sit together and they are talking. I sit just next to it in the other compartment, and then suddenly, like, I can watch, check my clock. In five or ten minutes, the conversation will somehow move towards something happening in Brazil or, or like anything else. Uh, and uh, then there are all random associations suddenly popping out, which they are very talk out, very dull and very open. And it is, uh, it is frustrating and it is scary. Or at some point, somebody will might yell slurs towards somebody, uh, uh, racist slurs towards another white person, but it's very clear they would not use that without me being in the room there. Hmm. Um, or, or like, I mean, when you go, one reason I don't watch soccer in Europe is simply because like, as soon as a, as a black person is failing in, in soccer, is making a mistake, there's all kinds of stuff going on that, that is, uh, I, they are shouting stuff at the, at the shouting stuff at, uh, at people that I, I'm now in a co-working space and I don't want to traumatize anyone, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's insane. It's wild. And like people, yeah, yeah, it's wild. I mean, in everyday life in Switzerland, it's a little bit more like uh, in Germany, they might sometimes directly yell at you in Switzerland. It's more like they look at you and suddenly they start talking to you twice as loud and twice as slowly, like for absolutely no reason. And, and, and constantly in a way of like, um, uh, in a way of, I'm protecting my garden here, so constantly in a way of, in an assertive way, in an assertive idiotic way. And I'm literally like, it's like this Trevor Noah sketch where I'm, where I'm saying like, Hey, I'm standing right in front of you. I can hear you very well. Why are you shouting? Uh, so do you uh, think, do, do you think they think you don't speak German? Like, I, yes, I'm so confused. But, but, Yes, but also when you speak German, then it doesn't like, then when you speak German, they're like, oh my God, where did you learn German so well? It is because I was born here. Like there are people like you are born here or people who get like my Tanzanian dad who were born here and who speak German. I mean, and, and it's, yeah, also the police, like for example, the police is just stopping, going through an entire crowd of white people just wanting to see my passports. Yeah. So like, and, and no matter what is happening in public transportation, um, of people yelling at me and so on, like there's no help. Nobody will help anything. You can, I'm now a bit dramatic, uh, but like if you get beaten up or even stabbed in public transportation, all white Germans would just look into their, look into their book or look into their phone. That is already a German problem in general. It gets three times as big if, if it is about racism, Isabel. Um, so if white, two white people are fighting, other white Germans are already not very likely to interfere simply because that is a German thing. I don't know. You, you worry your own stuff. Um, but if it's if it's a racist thing, even if it's somebody's yelling through the entire train wagon, nobody will do anything. Nobody. Nobody. And and if you fight back, um, I always need to watch that I never speak because I'm also tall and I have hair. So I always have to watch that no matter what confrontation I have with a white person, I may never speak louder that the white person, because as soon as somebody calls the police and they see a black person shouting, no matter what happened before, I am the problem. I am the target or like, so you always have to, the good thing is in Germany, you don't necessarily need to be, you don't need to be submissive in that way that you have to agree with a person. Germans are very good in actually saying like, no, I don't give a flying bridge. Uh, you are wrong. And that was racist. Um, but you must remain quiet. Otherwise, like quiet and composed. Otherwise, I, uh, they don't, the good thing is they don't, like, they don't shoot. They usually don't shoot people, but even if they hardly shoot anyone, you're still like six times as likely to be one of the few people who get shot when you're black. Wow. I'm taking this all in because honestly, so you know, I visited Berlin recently for the first time and I really loved it. And I, I felt like, oh, you know, maybe I could live in Berlin. I think, you know, it seems kind of, I prefer it to Paris, right? But I was there for a short amount of time. I'm a little scared now, but I think it's also, listen, it's easier, I think, being a woman of color 
than being a man of color. I think that, you know, men can be seen as threats, even though, but I felt a weird vibe. I felt like I couldn't understand, I felt like I couldn't read German people. And of course, I don't speak German, so I don't know what people were maybe saying around me, <laughs> right? It's nice to mm. have some sort of ignorance sometimes of not knowing. Um, but wow, this is disappointing. I think I'm just kind of disappointed that this environment is still so so present in Germany. Or maybe not still, but that it, that it exists. I sort of expected a little more. Um. But, uh, yes, it, it, I mean, I think it is specifically a Berlin perspective. Um, on one side, the benefit in Berlin is that there are the few spaces that are that are there for people of color. They are more political, probably because it's a capital city, which is nice. Um, on the other hand, I think in West Germany, the the, the uh, environment isn't as isn't as I would say not always as aggressive sometimes. But also then in the meantime, like there are people who also people of color who like don't question themselves at all. And there's not a lot of possibilities to actually find spaces to reflect or reflect intersectionality or intersectional perspectives and so on. So um, there is a bit of a question of like, OK, what is better? Is West Germany better, which is a bit more diverse or is are the actually relatively conscious political small spaces in Berlin? Are they somehow better? So it is, uh, but yet the, the environment like is very. I mean, it, it still is very much that problem that I think I have that I have described. So as much I I would love you to come uh, to Berlin, uh, but very much for my own uh, for my very own interest. Uh, I love when people um, when people of African descent come to Berlin, but um, it is difficult to sell it as, for example, better than in the states. I don't think it is. Mm. I'm not sure whether it's worse, but I don't think it's better. Yeah, it's interesting. It's right. We're always trying to find some place that maybe is a little better. Um, oof, I was hoping it's going to be. Well, you know, look, things are complicated, right? It is. It can be rough in the States. I think what is disappointing is that I think when you're in the States, many times Black people, people of color feel like we're looked at with suspicion. Right. And that if there mm, is mm -hmm. an encounter, we feel like, you know, we know that we'll be looked at as potentially being the problem or the troublemaker. And so it sounds like that still exists or that definitely exists in Berlin as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And the, a, a friend of mine who is uh, who is African-American, but who has learned very well German is still they use it so often. They use it so often that you are not a native German speaker to to kind of say okay it's because you're american or because you're foreign but it's not they just use that because he speaks german still with an accent and he's sometimes doubting on whether it's because he speaks with an accent no there are people who look like him who speak without an accent and they have the same issue so it's like they will always try to use or mask that problem but the problem is very real it's just something different clothing right I i'm glad to hear from you because really when i did a video about you know this people were telling me like oh you americans just you know, you make all this up, you know, this doesn't exist in, in Europe or this doesn't exist in France. And of course I know it does. Right. But what can I say when I'm not raised in the environment, but here you are, you're born mm, there. Yeah. You're, this is your life. Yeah, yeah, very much that. So yeah, when I, I mean, it's a bit dramatic. I mean, the way how I, started enjoying berlin is actually by being now here in tanzania in uh, so that my personal dream is to have like now i'm just in tanzania for like one or two months per year but my dream is to be like six months in berlin six months in in tanzania that would be my my dream life and the more i'm in tanzania the more do i actually also heal and my relationship to berlin or europe in general normalizes a bit but not in a way that i am much nicer or forgiving but it's it, it, it's clearing my mind some things yeah some things are ignorant because some things are ignorant here as well but the ignorance becomes very violent here in, in germany and this is where racism starts and it is it is all around us it is all around us yeah well i'm happy to start this conversation with you to have this conversation because i think when you say ignorance, right? That's the thing. I think that people, we just need to understand that 
A, we're not, no one's colorblind. This concept I think is, is silly and unnecessary, right? No one's colorblind. We all see, co well, some people are colorblind, but that's a medical problem, right? <laughs> Unless mm. you have a medical problem where you cannot see colors, but even if you can't, you can see hair texture, right? There are other indicators. You can see nose width, you can see lip size. You know, there are indications that are associated with various races, right? And so to pretend like we we can't discern these things, I think is unhelpful. And I think mm. different races are amazing and we can acknowledge different races, but we don't have to discriminate based on that, right? That's a difference, right? We don't need to be colorblind or culture blind in order to not be prejudiced. Right. So I think yes. I'm hoping that in having these conversations, we can start to be honest, right, as a society, because I think we can only move beyond issues of race when we're honest about it. You know? Yeah. So I'm yeah. hoping that we can start having these honest conversations. Um, and and maybe, you know, more people of color will come to Berlin. We can change some stereotypes, you know. So Let's see how all of that goes. Um, is there anything that you want to add before we wrap this up for the day? Um, no, I mean, no, no, not not really. Like, um, I think a good thing is, and something something that has uh, a good thing is, I think when you're from the Americas, like people with uh, from the Americas still have a certain status in in, in Germany. Um, even uh, even uh, African Americans are then seen, let's say, in a, in a mean way, said, but you're the least evil uh, of all black people, evil, uh, villainized of all black people. So it would be great if you if you would come to uh, um, to Germany. It would be great to have a look on what what work the uh, existing black African German communities already have done uh, in Germany to 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 have a look at that because we like we had it several times that some. Uh, uh, one or two African Americans came from the States and were like kind of in, behaving like they were defining the entire conversation in you when, when it's like, uh, yeah, when it's not the case, the conversation is there and has been amplified in various directions. So yeah, that is, uh, you can still then make your decision on whether that is a community for you because the community, I mean, yeah, it's a community for you. Um, uh, from my point, uh, be welcome. I'm not deeply integrated in one, but uh, again, I think, uh, be welcome, but that is, yeah, if you become active, uh, it would be great to have a look what's already there um, and then uh, see what you can take, amplify, or add new uh, from that. Yeah, I love that. And I think that's important to remember too, right? When we come into new spaces to respect what already exists, maybe we can build and grow, but, you know, maybe not to, to take over or to try to take over. Uh, conversations and things like that too. I think it's it's important to remember. So I appreciate your time. I hope you found this conversation helpful and interesting. Let us know what you think in the comments. You know, what have your experiences been like? Have you visited Berlin or Germany? Do you want to come? Still come. Don't be afraid, right? We're, we're having conversations. We're having a dialogue. But the idea is not to dissuade you, but it's to be honest about what's happening so that we can move forward. So that's it for now, and I'll see you in the next one.